Now, why even make such a system to control the momentum of a swinging platform? No, that wasn't rhetorical. I'm genuinely asking because I cannot fathom the actual gameplay usage of this system. I made this for a couple of reasons, the first being that I thought it would be quite interesting for levels visually if some objects had some level of momentum based on when you were moving them. Logically, if they were hanging, you would actually have some momentum added to them based on how the player interacts with them when you're moving on them. Your momentum is transferred to the thing you are standing on. The second reason is that I thought it would be a nice gameplay challenge with the acrobatics levels to involve some objects that are hanging by rope which may have their own physics. The issue with that was whenever the momentum objects you were standing on had very intense physics or very difficult to navigate movements, it was very unsatisfying and difficult to even perform, so I couldn't design a level around these, and I couldn't really put them in a level as a hazard. So now they just remain as a very visually interesting platform. How or how does this system work? Very simply, when the player stands on a platform, or stands on any object, we already have a script in place for checking the information of this platform. It's how I manage things like moving platforms, or platforms at momentum. So in this setup, we now just read if the platform is a swinging platform. If it is a swinging platform, when the player is stood on this platform and has momentum, they will feed that momentum to the platform. Basically, if we're moving on a platform with a amount of momentum, this being a player is actually moving, then this momentum is fed into the platform we are stood on. The player is also childed to this platform, so they will carry through the swinging momentum of the platform's actual movements. Once we have the player set on the platform, we have the actual visuals and momentum for how the platform moves itself. This is very, very simple. The player builds speed when on the platform. This adds to the platform's momentum and adds the momentum that the platform is going to build to. This also adds a delay for how long the platform is going to hang on this momentum. This is basically if the player stops using the momentum, it doesn't initially snap back to a resting state. It will have some follow through based on how much momentum has been added to the platform. Basically, this is just a very slight visual timer being added to add some level of realistic or smoothing to the movement. Once the platform is being fed no momentum and can stop moving, and its delay is also at zero, so this triggers the platform actually being able to move back, all I do is I shift it back and forth in a swaying motion. And this is actually probably my favorite part of the momentum platforms. I think the actual swaying back and forth movement of the platforms is very smooth looking and very nice looking for both the player standing on the platform and the platform itself visually. It really carries through the weight of momentum of the platform just wiggling back and forth. Obviously none of these are very extreme because these are platforms where the player is going to be stood on them and just shooting the player back and forth very harshly is very disorienting for the player and also just not very good for gameplay. This is just done by a very simple calculation. If momentum is more than zero, we have a follow through momentum, which is the minus amount, and if the follow if the momentum is less than zero, we have a positive value of the follow through. Our momentum then when it has no momentum fed to it by the player, we'll just let this follow through and then calculate a new follow through based on the value of that follow through and back and forth until we get to a very small amount of momentum. Once we have a very small amount of momentum, we can just turn this scripting off and turn this movement off because the moving platform does not need to move anymore. I wonder how many of my devlogs recently I have discussed momentum and follow through of objects the player has stood on. It feels like a lot of them. It feels like primarily all of them. The reason for that is because this level I'm designing has a lot of acrobatic movements, and acrobatic movements that you move with the player have to have a lot of follow through to look nice and satisfying. Though interestingly, I feel like I have coded a completely different setup of follow through for every single acrobatics functionality, which 
is probably not a great thing. I probably could have really streamlined this process by not coding everything completely new for every single acrobatic system. But it was fun to do. Now that's just the momentum for the actual surface of the object. This doesn't actually do anything in terms of functionality. So what I do is I take this momentum, I calculate how much this momentum is based on the maximum momentum of a swinging platform. And this is just whatever the maximum momentum I have set for this platform is. It's usually around six. Then I just let the rotation of this swinging platform from zero to either positive or negative of this rotation. So I can have the momentum of the platform fed into the rotation of the platform and have it actually sway back and forth with momentum. But the difficult aspect of this is that the actual log we're standing on, or the platform itself, doesn't rotate. So I have the pivot point of this rotating platform rotate, but then the actual object we're stood on stay completely static in its rotation, which gives the illusion of this object rotating back and forth with momentum, but only moving back and forth with the momentum of the swinging platform. So it's actually moving as it realistically would, in opposed to just rotating on an axis to move back and forth. Finally, we have the visuals. I drew a bunch of logs for each different momentum platform and then used the sprite for the swinging rings to be the handle of the platforms. And that's it! I really like how these look visually, I think they're pretty interesting, and considering they're just primarily just a, a, a log shape similar to the trees I drew, I think they stand out well enough in the scene, especially with all the other visual elements on them. They read very easily as a swinging platform or a unique object the first time the player views them, at least I think so. One complexity with this is that I tried using rope sprites to just have a sprite from the top of the ring to the bottom of the log where they are connected by a rope. Um, the issue with this is that when rotating left and right with the ropes, sometimes the rope sprites would clip out of the log or you would be able to very clearly see that they are just sprites stuck on the log. So to correct this, all I do is create two line renderers, one for the left rope, one for the right rope, and I calculate their relative positions based on the rotation of the log. This is very easy. The top part goes on the ring. The bottom part goes on the left or right side of the log. And I already have a line renderer system set up for rendering out the rope lines because I made a whole video about ropes. So it was very easy. I think visually this is probably my favorite element of the game so far. The second favorite of mine would probably be the acrobatic poles, but I think the rotating platforms just visually look really nice to me. So yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome for this one. And that's it for devlog. I promise, eventually, these devlogs are going to stop being about incredibly niche aspects of my game's coding. I think this is a very neat system to have added into the game. I'm a big fan of how it works, both visually and also in gameplay. It's a very simple system, it just adds a bit more unique movements to the game. It makes the levels look a bit more fluid, a bit more organic, and not like static sprites just floating in space. Having actually moving elements to objects you stand on is, I think, pretty nice. One thing I want to do, and I may not in a future update, I may get lazy and not add this, but one thing I want to do is certain platforms where you stand on them, they will have a recoil based on you just landing on them organically. So if you landed on the platform, it would bounce up and down very slightly with you landing on it. The reason I may not add this is because I feel like that could also be very disorienting for a player, but I think visually it would look pretty, pretty good. It would look very fluid and organic in the scene, as if you're actually interacting with the objects you're standing on. But also, with the game being a platformer, that could also be very bad for design. I don't know why I'm telling you this, because that's not what the devlog is about. The next devlog is about, um, let me, let me check my notes, let me check my notes. Um, um. Oh, it's about enemy logics.